Do Dissidents Boys here, Keaton and Russell, join the show. What's up, boys? What's, What's up? going on, Pasta? It's <laughs> great to see you again. I'd like, like to the- begin the show by just saying that uh, I happen to be Jewish. I think it's good for me to start out by saying I happen to be Jewish. I also happen to hate myself, uh, only but I'm not half. a self-hating Jew in the in the sense that Jesus Christ you know, was like that. Often described, yeah, he was a self-hater too. Yeah, he's a Dobular, are you Jewish too? <laughs> <laughs> I I I am. Um, unlike Keaton, I'm not a day walker. I'm a full blood. Oh, you <laughs> are. Oh, Keaton didn't say he's a day walker. Oh, wait, he's a day. <laughs> he's so a like, day. Here's what we call a day walker at around the synagogue. Is, it, I mean, I'm actually technically a liar because I'm Jewish on my father's side. Yeah, he's not even Jewish. Is it a rule? I, I consider I, myself I, culturally I always, Jewish. I always, yeah, I've always found that to be reflective of a kind of uh, you know very worldly cynicism of Jews, like. Well, who knows who Stutter, you know? You don't know. Unless, <laughs> unless it comes out of the woman, how do you know? Well, I thought you were like, so he's like George Santo. He's Jewish. Not like completely like That's Russell. That's old Russ Beneath joke. Russell's Jewish. But I would say I'm jew right. hey, What is Not Sammy Jew-ish. Davis Jr. I'm then? jew What Very is Whoopi Jew-y. Goldberg then? <laughs> what is Sammy Davis Jr.? He converted. Know. Yeah. He's, he's a, Keaton is either a self-hating uh, Jew or he's a Jew-loving Maltese. Keaton, give us your definition of self-hating Jew, because I was told before, you know, because I I grew up in Boca Raton. I moved from New York to Boca Raton. Like I said, I had a lot of uh, Zionist fathers, uh, you know, uh, my friend's fathers who I really looked up to them. They were mentors of sorts. Uh, You know, I heard the story of the 1940s wars, all of them, you know, over brisket and cavelta fish in Boca Raton many years ago. Uh, So when RFK was saying a lot of those things, they were very common to me. They were old lies but what would you describe because i've heard that max blumenthal they would say oh he's a self-hating jew same thing with norman finkelstein what is your definition keaton of a self-hating jew well i mean they would describe a self-hating jew as a jew with a friendly self-deprecating sense of humor that's how they would say it but um (laughs) they also i mean they would also call me a self-hating jew because i'm not a zionist because i believe in this context of this conversation of uh what is very controversial in Zionist circles, which is recognizing the humanity of Palestinian people. You guys were talking earlier about how Donald Trump really touched his third rail when he called Hezbollah smart. Well, the reason that was such a third rail, he called Hezbollah smart and he called the Netanyahu government stupid. You can't say that Arabs are smart and Jews are stupid because Zionism is predicated on the idea that Jews are people and Arabs are animals. And so when Donald Trump says Hezbollah is smart and Israel is dumb, well, that just blows up the whole premise for the Israeli state to begin with. Broadly speaking, more specifically, obviously, we are in the midst of a genocide right now. And that is also predicated upon the idea that Jews are people and Arabs aren't. Russell, did you, I, I, listen, I, this is why I brought the boys. Hey, I, couldn't, well, I, yeah. I couldn't describe I, my feelings to say it properly when we uh, went through right. the whole thing. But you know, and these guys... Right. And this is why I'm big fans so of they, their they, show. Basically, they're like America. Because I remember when, when we went to Iraq, I don't remember if I said this out loud, but I know I felt like this, and lots of people did, especially because 9-11 happened while I was there. Uh, I hope we kill, like, f- I don't know, five to eight of them for every one of us that died. Yeah. And I don't give a... And then, remember, we so we go in Iraq, we took some weird yeah. detour. Everybody, I was like, cool, makes sense to me. Yeah. Then stuff started getting real weird. Like we had a like, gay pyramid prison. And my buddies would go, that just sounds like fraternity hazing. And we all turned into, and I remember the admiration for how tough Israelis are about this kind of stuff. And I remember friends of mine saying, we should be barbaric. That's a quote. I'm quoting yeah. a good friend of mine. And everybody was down with it. And then I dated an Israeli girl for 10 years. And what I learned was, they're like, oh, well, you think we're not going to do exactly? First of all, Americans are, are like uh, pussy Canadians to them. Mm-hmm. They look at us the way we look at Canadians, Israelis. Secondly, they're they're our co, like our co, uh, our crimey for all the stuff we do. So that means they're going to take extra help into crimes, yeah. and they're entitled to it. And I, by the way, I can't even say you know honestly if I lived in in Ga- near Gaza as, and I was the same age as whoever, I might have a rave outside a concentration camp. I'm not even judging. That's why I'm not like oh good get them or whatever. I just feel bad like. I guess Hitler lives inside all of us. Mm. 
Okay. Russell, what are your thoughts on that whole situation, what, what uh, Keaton just described? Because there is a lot of evidence to back that up, that a lot of the Israelis look at us the way we look at Canadians. When you just see, you know, what, what was his Natali Bennett, the ex-prime minister, going, why are you talking to me about my enemy? It's like, holy yeah, shit. Right. Like, did he just say that out loud? The defense minister called them human animals. Please, Russell. Uh, well, we find ourselves in the unlikely position of being the Jew whisperers on this show. <laughs> so I will, I will, <laughs> uh, I can tell you from, from my own experience, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance in the Jewish community around Israel and Zionism. It's very interesting to see the crack showing because there were, when I was growing up, there was absolutely no dissent, at least no visible dissent. Yeah, right. Certainly, certainly not from Jews. I mean, there, there was they, they sang from one uh, hymnal. Uh, and I, I was talking about this on the show yesterday. Uh, when you get sent to Hebrew school, uh, Hebrew school is Hebrew and Zionism. That's it. It is Zionist indoctrination camp. Um, and... There is really no room for variation in opinion. What you're seeing now, a lot of Jews don't want any part of this. There, there is clearly a inherent contradiction in a people who have suffered horrible racism being in the position of perpetrating it. And that is a very painful thing for them to admit and I think particularly for people who are Israeli, in regards to what you're talking about, Philip Roth wrote about this a lot. Yeah, Israelis look at American Jews like us, like we have a shtetl mentality, like we're ghettoized, like we, <laughs> we, never, we never left the ghettos of Europe in our mind, whereas they went out and, you know, very Sam Peckinpah, through violence, they found their manhood. They reclaimed their manhood from the Gentile by taking this land. That's a big part of their core mythology and self-image. And it's very difficult for them to acknowledge because, look, you're an Israeli. Once you start going down the road of untangling the history of that region, you're forced to come to the conclusion that you've perpetrated an enormous crime and the country itself i mean i don't i don't want to get a strike on jimmy's tab here but the country itself is of questionable legitimacy i'll put it that way well wait and, wait, wait hold on i'm cuz you know hey the bible <laughs> i don't want to throw stones at the israeli reason for being because i don't know if you know america we just took their story to justify making America. <laughs> we took the Old Testament somehow yeah. and made that mean to hey, slaughter all the Indians and take the whole thing. God said we should. Yeah. So it's like, I, it's, I bet, and it is a crazy idea that God said you could just go do whatever, but at least they're using well, their own book to do it. I mean, if you, if you read the, if you actually read the Bible, and I read the Bible so that I could debate Bible people, um, which I still do on occasion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've mellowed a little bit. I don't seek them out like I used to. Um, but yeah, it, basically God tells the Jews to go commit a genocide against seven nations in the Bible. He, he, sa he says, well, this land is yours. The only problem is there are people still living on it. So you're going to have to go and take it. So a lot of this is in there in that core mythology but i i've had people try to argue to me well but when a country conquers another country mm -hmm. well that's it there's there's you don't you don't that's the way it is you don't get to just reclaim the country okay even if you're going to take that uh, this is the way of the world logic there's a very big difference between america conquering parts of mexico and making those parts of America and making the people who live there American and conquering a territory and not being able to incorporate those people into your country. Right. Because the basic premise of the country is inherently racist. You cannot have a Jewish state and a majority Arab region if you're going to give the full rights of citizenship to the conquered population. 
this is why we have what we have in Israel. They conquered the territory, but, but the ba by the basic premise of their state, they were not able to incorporate the people who were already there into the country. If they had, <laughs> Israel would be an Arab state. Right. You, man, you know my girl I was with 10 years that was mm -hmm. Israeli Jew. I mean, grew up in America. She yeah. grew up in Elkins Park with that Nazi yeah, yeah. monument. Yeah, <laughs> Turns out about. it's built. Um, it was amazing when we first dated the amount of, uh, you know, I wasn't Jewish, so that was going to be a big problem. I mean, she got over it. Her family had drummed in it, and they weren't even religious Jews. They were just Zionist. Yeah. So that means your vagina is a, a portal that makes soldiers to send to Israel. That's how I took it. <laughs> That's exactly how I took it. Um, and I and I remember I used to go on Yahoo questions just to be like a dick because it was hilarious to me. Like I said, it was with ten years. I take a huge offense of it, but I found it hilarious. Yeah. That somehow that's not racist or like bigoted or no, you don't understand. We get to have a concentration camp. We've been through a lot. We get to have. What else can we do? Yeah. What else can they do besides build a literal concentration camp of two right. million people? Yeah. But there's nothing they can do. I don't even want to know about it. I don't even want to get into this whole thing. I just want to be able to work. Ah, uh, wow, this show today, uh, it's so educational. So let's talk about uh, what's going on in the American media and the social, you know, the, uh, the interwebs over here, right? So there's this argument that a lot of people, and I played both sides, and, you know, I did this for Mark Sloboda because I just wanted to get his opinion on it. I love your opinion on it as well. There's a lot of people out there, you know, and especially my libertarian friends who when I used to, when I said plain and simple that Russia was justified in doing what they did with Ukraine. Oh, for wanting they, a buffer yeah. against their enemy. Well, of also wants? going in and saving more people from the 14,000 already ethnically Russians that were killed in the Donbass by mainly the Azov battalion where the United States armed them to the teeth because they knew they were the type of people who would turn against their own citizens. They knew the regular Ukrainians who were not part of the Azov Battalion would probably have a hard time shelling other Ukrainians, even if they did speak Russian. Um, Craig, so, the ADL has just uh, announced that the Azov is good now. Yeah. <laughs> the ADL, <laughs> that guy's really mad. They didn't even send him a, a card. <laughs> so there has been, you know, I I, I mentioned Richard the Meadows. Truth is, I always kind of liked Hitler's mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mentioned uh, Richard Medhurst, you know, I mentioned my business partner sometimes, some other people too as well, other people we know in the media, they were like, when Gaza struck back, whether it be Hamas only, uh, they look at it as more of a Palestinian coalition, a resistance coalition of people within Gaza, not just an isolated event from Hamas, uh, but even still, like Mark Sloboda said, and they, anybody who would push back for their existence against the what, Israeli unprovoked? government unprovoked <laughs> anybody who would push back they were going to at this point because they had nothing to lose it, you know there's been a blockade since 2006 they're kept just above starvation their water is controlled i said slaves don't fight back Sla excuse me slaves don't attack they revolt and that's what's going on there i'm not glorifying right. what happened the killing of innocent women and civilians but we understand, and I think you guys understand, due dissonance, more than anybody, what the Israeli state has been doing for the last, since their existence. Carpet bombing, mowing the lawn, right? So we have... People don't know that that's what they say. I didn't know that's a quote We of know. Yeah, but when you say that, I'm telling you, dude, people are not going to know. But the people who are getting emotional, they know. They just you think they, Robbie they Suave just, knows? Yes, they do. And so does and so does Charlie Kirk. And so does Dan Bongino. And so does all Matt Gates. They know what they're doing. They they don't even hide it. They just justify it. And they justify it the same way the Israelis justify it. These people are animals. They're less than. That's how they well, justify it. Well, I guess everybody it. doesn't understand. If your government would designate somebody animals and treat them that way, they'll do that to you too. Yeah. At the you know, Netanyahu mm -hmm. uh tested an experimental vaccine on Jews first, yeah, and is proud of it, which was something that, and I know the do dissonance boys are probably have different opinions than us on this, or definitely than me on this. That that to me, when it came to the population of Israel, when Norman Finkelstein said the people have changed, they're a lot less than they're less compassionate than they were 30, 40 years ago. And you guys might notice this your uncles, your grandfathers, your aunts, your uncles. I don't know. There was at least a sense I when I remember growing up that there was some form of compassion for the Palestinians as to right now, when you go out to a rally, make it a parking lot. You know what I'm saying? It's 
full blown now. Max Blumenthal has talked about the Israeli population, same with Dan Cohen, where they are just so anti-Palestinian nowadays, they look at them as less than. So this is, I think, I don't know if this is George Washington, what college, but this is once again a pro-Palestinian rally where they say, we have hang gliders, they have tanks, glory to the resistance. They got tanks, we got hang gliders. They got tanks, we got hang gliders. Glory to the resistance. Now, really quickly over here. Where, where was that? I think it was George Washington or another college. Listen, Saturday in L.A., Russell, there's going to be a, a protest out here in the streets of L.A. I went to the last one. You'll probably hear a lot of arguments like that. You know what I'm saying? And and people who were saying, what choice did they have? Mark Sloboda said he doesn't stand by Hamas and what they do. But at the end, he goes, if I was probably in their shoes, I'd be a lot worse and harsher than Hamas from what Israeli has done, from the Israeli government has done to the people for quite some time. Right. So this well, is wait. this is some of those Israelis. This is them celebrating Gaza Gaza as a cemetery. Okay, and I'm just setting this up. Oh, that's the other reason you got to marry a Jew, I realize, is because there's a breeding war that's been going on since they set up this concentration camp. And that's what there's two and a half million in there now. And that's yeah. been a problem well, for Max a while. Max Blumenthal talked about that when he went to Israel for the first time on his birth trip. You know, and I went birthright. to Spain. My girl birthright told me. Trip. They I, try listen. to get you to bang. Yeah. They set yeah. the boys and girls together to try to get you pregnant. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, you know. Chabad does I, that. And listen, I grew up in Boca Raton, Florida. I, uh, you know, I went to a school that was 80% Jewish. You know what I'm saying? My freshman year, they tried to be, they would try to stay open during the Jewish holidays and nobody showed up. So my sophomore year on, it's like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to have no school on the Jewish holidays because it doesn't make sense. But now there's been this conversation out there, right? In social media, in mainstream media is how can you, you know, once again, glorify what they're doing. This kind of signifies everything that we've been seeing going on, and I'm going to get you guys' opinion on this because I want to know from you guys what the action should be. Like I said, I didn't like some people where I saw them kind of glorifying what was going on. I didn't think it helped you mention, Kurt. It doesn't help when you go rah, rah, rah for anything. Yeah, all right? the people that say they stand with this or that, as long as I've been alive, no, you didn't. You tweeted. You sang a, a nursery rhyme. Ben Shapiro's really upset. He didn't pick up a gun and go go clean out Gaza. Yeah. Everybody's full of nonsense. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to keep my swearing back. Well, I like to swear. Let's play this real quick and get their opinion from the boys. Check this out. This is this is the blow up that happened with this same argument we see going on everywhere. When a Israeli child is killed versus when a Palestinian child is killed. When a Palestinian child is killed, and we heard this from Dershowitz and many other defenders of the indiscriminate killing of Palestinian children. Well, it must be the case that uh, Hamas was using them as a human shield. It must be the case that a missile was located, a Hamas missile was located close to those children and it could not be helped. And on the other side, we're, get, we're being told that Palestinians are keeping Israeli children in cages and decapitating them by the dozens, neither which rumor turned out to be true. And yet in the middle of a tragedy that needed no embellishment to make the case for why Hamas's acts are horrible. And tragic. There is still this embellishment, and I believe it is rooted in a desire to strip humanity from the people of Palestine and justify doing what Max Miller and a number of other officials in the Israeli uh, government have said, Max which Miller is to an obscure Republican official. It does not matter what he says. So every leftist, wait a minute, Robbie, every leftist in America was asked to apologize for some random protest. They should apologize. They should apologize for their endorsement of terrorist attacks on innocent Israeli civilians, just as I am outraged by the retaliatory actions that are killing innocent Palestinian children everywhere. <laughs> I care about both of these things and have said I care about both of these things over and over again. It is you and the idiotic leftist terrorist sympathizing people who do not care about the dead Israelis. They don't. So I'm a terrorist and they've said it over and over again. Black Lives Matter has said it. The Harvard students have said it. The DSA in various locations have said it. The left endorses what Hamas did. Face. They do. They endorse it. The Harvard newspaper said exactly what the editorial page of Israel's major newspaper said. I don't give a f Brianna. Okay, well, that's He's clear. Straight. That's He's a straight guy. But the Israeli voices in Israel who are getting killed, 
because their fascist right wing government decides to keep two. The Israelis are getting killed people. because a terrorist group targeted them, Israelis? and they bear responsibility for what they did. Well, Robbie, if you think you know more than Israel, Israelis in Israel, then you can feel free to have your pitch position. Is, he's supposed to be a libertarian. My buddy, he's Dave, he's my buddy be, yeah. Dave Smith, who I got to say I've known for many years, yeah. really knows his shit on okay. a lot of things. Yeah, he's the one that first sent me the articles of Benjamin Netanyahu saying we must support Hamas to divide them from West Bank in the Knesset or okay, whatever it's but, called. But David Smith too got into it with Caleb Maupin today, back and forth as well. And I see this all the time, and I see this from a lot of libertarians. I think Maupin's sometimes. a dipshit. They try maybe, but whatever the case may be. But I see a lot of I see a lot of libertarians trying to both side this things that you got to condemn both sides we still want to have a media job (laughs) yes but what do you expect these people to do when they've been carpet bombed for so long craig they're the prisoners they hadn't done in the concentration camp can i yell like robbie right now if they hadn't done that unprovoked attack Netanyahu was right about to let them out of that concentration camp. And because yeah, they did that, day. they've ruined their chances. Okay, of let's go to the boys. <laughs> let's go to the boys. Uh, Keaton, you, wanted, oh, let, you want Russell to take a stab at it? You guys make a, a decision. Why don't you guys take a stab at this? Is this, is it, is this hypocritical for what's going on, I think? Because it, it's done heavily by the right, the, the populist right. I think one of the best tweets I saw on Saturday morning was Dave DeCamp from anti War.com going, well, you know, that coalition with the populist right, it was fun while it lasted because we knew they were all coming out calling Hamas terrorists and justifying what was to come, which we see right now. And it's like, get out of North, get out of North Gaza now because the, 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 the missiles are going to rain. Your thoughts, you guys give me your opinion. Is there some hypocrisy here? Is it okay for people to celebrate? Should they not celebrate at all? Give us your opinions. I, will, I, I always will defer to my go day. There I will know. defer to my day walker associate. Oh, you'll defer to him? Okay. Look at this. He's, he's, a very, he's very Sounds passionate good. on this issue. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, first of all, I, as a rule, libertarians are funny when they're mad. I've always thought that about <laughs> So he's no exception. Um, but what I would say uh, also is that, um, Pasta, what you said about slaves not attacking but revolting, that's absolutely right. Norm Finkelstein compared this to a slave revolt. I compared this to a slave revolt uh, on our show uh, last week. I did a book report on Nat Turner in the third grade. I don't know how I was able to get at my hands on a Nat Turner biography as a third grader. I was literally nine years old reading about a bloody slave revolt in which, yes, women and children were killed. Um, to, to condemn the way in which a slave revolt makes no sense because a slave has no ability to organize politically, to organize economically. In this case, people in Gaza cannot organize militarily. They are policed brutally they are surveilled constantly they are denied basic freedom such as freedom of movement so it is of course absurd to evaluate the quote unquote merits of their resistance <laughs> it makes no sense because you are assuming that they have a level of agency that they do not have because they are granted no agency by the governing system under which they live. Jews in concentration camps had no agency. Right. Palestinians in concentration camps have no agency. Slaves are afforded no agency. They are left no options. So Israel made it so that the only character a revolt could take is this kind of character. Very conveniently, a character that they could then condemn as terrorism and therefore invalidate it. Now, what you said, Pasta, earlier about not wanting to glorify this. I agree with that 100%. Chris Hedges says war is the greatest evil. He writes, war is maggots eating children's eyes. That's what war is. So when you glorify war and you venerate the warrior, um, that is really what you are propping up. You know, it was a story a while back where the Pentagon had a deal with the NFL, where they had a deal where the NFL would, you know, put on these very jingoistic pregame shows and really laud the military. That's why we glorify war and the warrior country. We glorify war and the warrior because of how unglorious war actually is, how ugly and how vulgar war actually is. So, no, I do not glorify violence. I think all violence is tragic. I think all war is is obscene, but it is the Israeli state that chose deliberately over several decades to make this inevitable. 
And so to talk about, well, they they have to take responsibility. I mean, that's nonsense. It's nonsense. That's not that's not even a political statement as far as I can see. And I and I also want to add, and I'm, uh, this is one of these things. I'm going to have to be a little careful how I how I say this. Uh, you know, when Hamas responded about killing civilians, they argued they don't consider uh, settlers civilians. Now, whether you agree with that or you don't agree, I got to say, if I moved into the house of Palestinians who were kicked out and thrown into an open air prison, I'd be sleeping with one eye open personally. You wouldn't have so, a rave next to it? What's that? You wouldn't throw a rave next to the wall? No, no I would probably <laughs> That's what I would do. not. I would probably not throw a rave. I would probably not be happy. Saying, oh, and right, and when they're hand gliding in, in going the, running towards them. In the shadow yeah. of the concentration camp that my state has built. We, we showed a video on one of our patron streams the other day where literally the Palestinian woman is saying to the Jewish settler, uh, she knew his name. They seem to have some kind of a personal relationship. You know this is not your house. And he literally says to her, this was on now this. Uh, well, if I don't steal it, somebody it. else is going yeah. to steal it. Okay? That's so great. if I if I were that guy and these people broke out and came for me, I can't say I would be terribly surprised. You will blow me not, away. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that's the case with everybody. And again, as Keaton says, of course, war is always an obscenity and always a tragedy. But I think particularly in a heavily militarized state like Israel, where everybody serves in the IDF when they turn 18, the definition of civilian is a little blurry. Well, I, there are settlers that came in from Europe we, at, at an older age from the, from America, too, as well. <clears throat> they never had to serve in the IDF. And that's where some rockets were. We're going to. Okay. One, since this happened, I talked to a bunch of my friends that are both Israeli. None of my friends that are Israeli, and I haven't seen it. Maybe you guys have seen it. I haven't seen anyone deny that it's a concentration camp when I they say just it's justify a, it. Uh, they yeah. don't go, it's not a con. Not, dude, they this is crazy. They just justify it. I know. It's I nuts. call it a con, which I think is inflammatory. Norman Finkel, the Jew Norman Finkelstein told me it's a concentration camp, which is pretty inflammatory. Not one person goes, no, it's not. They all they do is bring up history. It's unbelievable. And they then my ju- favorite like I part. I said they'll justify it. Man. A, a week ago, when Canada honored an actual goddamn Nazi war criminal who they've been harboring for not however long, it suddenly got real nuance. There's all this nuance about real Nazis that actually fought in World War II as Nazis. We got to get real nuanced. And then Hamas, how can you even think there's a nuance to this and not condemn it immediately? You know, the 40 babies being beheaded, which you should know was bullshit when you heard, it sounds like an Alibaba story immediately. Yeah, you should have known yeah. that was fake unless you're an emotional idiot. Yeah. You know, that Waffen SS unit that they fuck, they saluted in Canada, they used to hang babies on barbed wire. And that ain't a rumor. That's a fact. Ain't that ironic? Yeah. Keaton, Russell, give us a little wrap up on this really quickly, because, well, let's get to the baby story, too, then, uh, since we've talked about it. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, and God, man, I've been so afraid to talk about these things. When I, That's why I bring you guys on, Norman Finkelstein. Cause Norman I'm like, Finkelstein. If I'm going get, through yeah. some shit, imagine what these uh, guys are going through. You can't get a Jew in your name than that. He yeah. said it first, and I believed yeah. the Jew, Norman Finkelstein. <laughs> and, Sorry. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and congratulations on that interview, by the way. That was a great piece of work. Thank you, guys. I, I never understood the thing, I swear to God, in a place surrounded by people from the region for 20 years. It was so confusing. I, I don't even want a part of this, which, by the way, is what everybody says. Yeah. Most citizens say, OK, and I, I don't even want to look into it. But what the problem is that that just not thinking about it, because everybody's been so self-righteous about Russia for the last three years, now that little song and dance ain't working so good. Yeah, It would have worked had they not blown their load acting as if Russia was the biggest psychopath evil. Russia wanted a buffer between them and NATO, which is a terror state. Between them and Israel, Nazis. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, between them and Nazis. Yeah. Israel, whenever you go, why don't you go to the 67 borders 20 goddamn years ago when that was on the table? No, we need a buffer. So 
I, I don't forget things. So now they're condemning, oh, that it can't be the real reason. You ain't saying that about Israel, are you? Even though you know Netanyahu paid this group because his psychopath coalition does not want any Palestinian two-state solution like the dumbass liberals that live here think was going to happen and then just forgot about. So on purpose, this imbecile thought he should fund Hamas, not Iran, not the people at Harvard, not BLM. Thank God the fat bitch from BLM stole the money and didn't send it to Hamas like she promised. Just Netanyahu and America, I'm sure, propped them up and it was a disaster. Whatever you think of Israel's policies, did they work out well? Would you say their plan worked pretty well? I know if I lived in Israel, I wouldn't say that. Hey, come see us doing the live shows. We're going to be in Dallas, Houston, San Diego, Bloomington, Illinois, Indianapolis, Levittown, New York, Red Bank, New Jersey, Wilmington, Delaware, Covina, California, Burbank, California, and Oxnard, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you at a live show. Mm -hmm.